All right, sup, y'all. I would like to wish y'all a very ack ack. A very ack ack. Ack ack. Uh, very ack ack. <laughs> ack ack. Uh, yeah, this is the boys, passive aggressor. You know, the same old three boys. You know, some wild punks raising hell. There you, you know, go. Fucking vibe. Yep. It's uh, it's uh, pervy. This is Johnny Rumble. Count Doom. Say what's up, y'all. What's going on, guys? What's up? We're just uh, fucking around, hanging out. We're doing a little uh, evening edition of the podcast. We normally uh, record the podcast at around, like, either a little before noon, around noon. But this time, we're going to be uh, doing it in the evening. Mm-hmm. Just mix it up. Just Throw see a little what happens. Ball, you know? This time, uh, Johnny is uh, recording super remote this time. Where are you at, Johnny? I'm in Vegas. <laughs> I'm in Vegas, Nevada. How's that work? How's that working for you? It's hot. <laughs> it's hot in this unit. That sucks. It sucks because it's been fucking sick in, Cal- in Southern California. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. It's been beautiful. <laughs> well, fu- I hope it gets shitty by the time you come back. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been great. It's been sunny. Nice. Breezy. Like 77, like, for the past couple days. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, it's been 100 here. I got it. It's been 100 here for the past, like, two days. <laughs> and the humidity has been pretty up there. <laughs> Very dry. Uh, where you been? Where are you uh, staying at? Uh, Airbnb. Oh, really? Uh, uh, where at uh, exactly? I am 10 minutes away from downtown uh, Vegas. Yeah. Oh, oh, I love Old Las Vegas. Hey, man, that's where I got made. Yeah. I love Old Las Vegas. Yeah, like, it's cool. Like, since we've been here, uh, we haven't even really set foot on the strip. <laughs> we've just been hanging out in, like... Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, we've just been hanging out mainly in, uh, like, yeah, old, like... Just old Las Vegas, you know? Uh, did you go over there? There's a um, there's a big old PBR sign. Uh-huh. And there's like there's like a like a diner there. I don't know if they're open, you know, given no. the circumstances, but yeah, there's a big ass PBR sign and it's like a it's like a diner run out of a what are those uh, old trailers called like an airstream? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like there's like a diner like run right out of one of those things. It's fucking sick. Nice. <laughs> nah. Dude. Yeah, shit's cool. Yeah, I love old Vegas, man. Yeah, old Vegas is amazing. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, like, you know, freeway wise, you know, you could see the strip and stuff, but it's it, it traffic wise, it picked up a little bit, you know. But um, oh. pretty much uh, the only yeah the only time like we well we went we saw the um. The Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas sign today. That's pretty much that was the one and only time we actually were on the strip, and it was the beginning of it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, but other than that, yeah, like we avoided it. Just wanted to hang out in you know, you, old Las Vegas. <laughs> you're you're probably better off. I don't know if you've seen any videos of the fucking strip recently. It's uh you know, if you love your if you uh if you have loved ones at home, it's probably not a good idea to go over the strip. No. Nah. No intention. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, if you if you if you love the people that you live with, yeah, it's probably probably better idea not to go to the strip. Yeah, no. You know, we, we haven't even been into um like casinos or anything like that. We've just been doing other stuff. Yeah. See, that's the, that's the cool part about the uh, old Vegas. Mm-hmm. It's sick. Yeah. So just can do just hang out. Just do shit. Just random shit, mm-hmm. man. It, there's busy. there's a lot of stuff to do. There really is, <laughs> you know, aside from the gambling and stuff, but honestly, yeah. not too much of a, of a gambling man, you know? Oh yeah. Neither am I. Yeah. I mean, I have, I obviously have enough addictions in my life, so I don't want to, <laughs> don't, don't want to, don't, <laughs> like, don't want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> no, hell no. I'm not, a, I'm not a rich man. <laughs> Dang, watch, you're going to start fucking, you're going to start skimming cash and then the, the mob is going to come and get you. Oh. oh, yeah. Hell no. I don't want none of that shit. <laughs> hell fuck no. 
Yeah. But yeah, no. Uh, and by the way, oh, have you been to Old Vegas since high school? Uh, I have, but it was like, I think I was underage though, so I uh, <laughs> I couldn't really. So, I didn't really have the freedom to really roam around and do what I got. Remember when? Remember when New Vegas came out? Yeah. Dude, so I hadn't been to Vegas since I was a little ass kid. Mm-hmm. And when I went to Vegas uh, last year, I uh, obviously went for a wrestling event and also went to go get married since we were there. Mm-hmm. So that would be a great idea. I had not been to Vegas since I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. And we and the courthouse is over in Old Vegas. Yeah. I didn't realize how much of old Vegas is in <laughs> Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, it's insane, dude. <laughs> I felt like such a nerd. I didn't want to tell Amanda, but I was walking <laughs> around. I was like, oh, shit. You're remembering the cities from freaking New Vegas instead? <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, my God. You pass state line and you're like, oh, my God, it's prim. Oh, dude, dude, we stayed in fucking essentially prim. <laughs> and when we came on the way, back, we stayed there for a night just because yeah. for shits and gills, we stayed at Buffalo Bills. Oh, you stayed at Buffalo Bills? I don't know anyone who really yeah. stays at uh, Terribles. Or uh, or is it Whiskey Pete? No, nobody. Yeah, nobody stays at Whiskey Yeah, Pete. for real. Oh, my God, dude, driving up there, dude, it's barricaded. Like it's uh, oh, word? it's a hundred percent shut down, dude. Like I don't, I, I no, I, I doubt it's out of business, but dude, like that parking lot was empty, empty, and everything was barricaded. No yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. pretty much like Vegas or nothing, you know. Hey, but hey, honestly, if you wanna, if you wanna, like, just stop by someplace, real, real cheap drinks. Just go. I don't know if Buffalo Bills is open. Just roll up to Buffalo Bills, like five dollar cocktails. Oh yeah. Hang out. There's a there's a Denny's in there. You can eat. The, I don't know if it's open right now given the circumstances, but yeah. Buffalo Bills. Is great. It's like it reminds me of uh, like what if like Knotts was inside? <laughs> yeah, hey, for real. It's awesome. I love Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, damn. We just. Talk about Vegas for like fucking ten minutes. Well, you think we're sponsored by them? <laughs> yeah. Bit, bit, all right. Well, actually, since you mentioned it, actually, uh, this episode is sponsored by the city of Las Vegas. Come visit Las Vegas, <laughs> where you can get coronavirus one hundred percent free. Come to the strip <laughs> and die. <laughs> die. Perfect. Damn. <laughs> Oh shit! Go go rub your hands on a uh, on a slot machine and lose your fingers due to coronavirus. <laughs> Las Vegas, enjoy. Dude. <laughs> hey, that sounded like a legit commercial. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that's too much. And so anybody, anybody wants to sponsor us, I won't shit on you like that. So just pay us, and I'll I'll do it in that voice. I'll be real, <laughs> real. Professional. Watch, you're gonna get a message from people that like um. Uh, local businesses that are like on Maryland Parkway. They're like, oh, this is brought to you by Maryland Parkway Wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> this is by this is brought to you. This episode is brought to you by Tow and Mo. We'll tow the motherfucking living shit out of your car <laughs> at five hundred dollars, or you can't pay for it because you're already living in adverse poverty. Oh, what? Tow and Mo. <laughs> Welcome to the inner city. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the inner city, motherfucker. <laughs> Suck on that. <laughs> Toe and mom. Damn. Fucking A. Yeah. So what's anyways? Yeah. A- so what's up with Yeah, Abe, Abe. What's up? Uh, I just been doing my thing here. Um I've been working on like drumming and all of that. I have my little snare drum set up here in my room. So <laughs> whenever it's like you know, convenient for everyone, I'll just start like banging on that and working on the rudiments. Mm-hmm. There you go. Rudiment. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've never, re- I never took the time really to practice all that stuff, but now I have, you know, have all the time in the world. So I'm just going through the little books and all that. Left, mm-hmm. right, left, left, right, 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 left, all that jazz. 
Oh, hell yeah. And what about That's you, Kirby? I've been, uh, I've been sitting at home. I've been, uh, I've been practicing our songs, the ones that we have recorded. Mm -hmm. Little, no little known fact about, uh, the songs that we recorded. Um, I, uh, I had not, I didn't have the lyrics prepared until we recorded them in studio. Mm -hmm. So I've never, uh, I've never said, uh, you guys know this, but I know they don't know this, whoever's listening, but, uh, I, uh, I had no vocals for the songs that we, <laughs> we had ready. So uh, I've been practicing that and, um, I'm not gonna lie. Some of it's fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> Some of it's fucking hard. And for the record, uh, all the solos that were done for the people listening to this, uh, those weren't completed. Like those are pretty much uh, <laughs> for doing it on the spot. Yeah, and provision. On the spot, baby. So yeah, it's it's a uh, pervy suck your dick hour. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Can we talk about that for about another thirty five minutes? Yeah. I just want to say that, you know, I'm actually a really, really fucking dope guitarist. <laughs> yeah, what a fucking I'm guy. not. I'm, what a fucking I'm guy. not. I'm not. I'm riding. I'm riding. I'm honestly riding the coattails of you guys. <laughs> yeah, but it, I'm, uh, it was cool, though, how, like, most of them were just one or two takes, really. Like, and the only time we went back is when you wanted to change something that you didn't like. It wasn't because it was a, a mistake or anything. You're just like, I think I could do it better. Let's try again. <laughs> Very true. And guess what? And guess what? It was like taking a test over again. It was worse than the first time. Oh, except for that one time. Remember when you were like in the wrong uh, part of the song? <laughs> and you were like, how'd that sound? I'm like, um, it's good, but it was like a bar too early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you called that out because that song would have sounded like dog shit. Because I, I, didn't, I, I didn't have the... Um, I didn't have the vocals. We didn't have the vocals on it yet, right? Yeah. So I was like, I didn't even like, I knew where it was supposed to be. And I knew where I wanted the vocals to be, but I'm a mega dumbass. And I was like, yeah, it's going to be good right here. And uh, Abel finally just said to a, a, our producer, Jeff, shout out Jeff, <laughs> Jeff of God, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Hell yeah. I was like, uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's not actually, it's actually not supposed to be there. I was like, Oh, fuck! You just got too. You just got too excited. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, man. the The rock and roll filled my, my filled my soul. Filled your right? bones. Speaking of uh, rock and roll, um, I saw this uh, this tweet on this website. It's called Twitter. Never heard of it. <laughs> I don't know if you. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. No. Nah. Um, I just figured it'd be like a little interesting little convo. Um, if you guys were stuck on a long ass plane flight with any musician, who would you guys uh, choose it? Choose your musician to be on a long ass flight to just sit and chat with. Fuck. Um. Damn. Uh, for me, it's Bill Ward. It's always Bill Ward. <laughs> no, I, matter, I no, gonna, no matter what the question you know? is, it's like, musician, hang out with Bill Ward, of course. Like, I was so mad. I was so mad you let Johnny sit there go. Uh, I was like, dude, just shut up and just let him, just say it. Just say it, dude. Just, I, I thought I, I had a, I thought Johnny was going to say one that we both, we probably both expected him to say, but he mm. didn't. So that's why I'll, I'll jump in. Come on, man! Like, how could I not just talk about Sabbath for a fucking? I was gonna say, what would you what? Like, say you were on like, say you were going to Japan. It's gonna be like a whatever hour flight. Fuck. Like, what would you talk to him about? Like, what would you talk to him about? Well, of course, his early early days before like Sabbath was formed and all that, and then you just talk about drum theory and all that. Of course, man, we could do that forever. Music nerds, you know. Yeah, you. Right. Yeah, I mean, we're all. We're all music nerds, obviously. We're the, we're the fucking band, so we're all fucking music nerds. And then he yeah. is too, you know. Like he's pretty modern and up to date with what's going on now. So yeah, there's all kinds of stuff we could talk about. Yeah. True. Like all of our favorite music, all of our favorite music are actual music nerds. Yeah, like that's fair to say, right? Yeah, I'd say so. 
Uh, I would say Dragon from the helicopters. Oh, really? That I actually kind of didn't expect that. One. Yeah, me yeah. neither. Yeah, just what would you what would you talk to him about? Uh, well, uh, c- kind of sucks, but like he doesn't play bass, but he he put a post up a while ago where he's like, "I give props to all the bassists." He's like, "I don't know how you guys can do this," you know. He's an epic guitar player. It's fucking hard. <laughs> it's fucking hard. You know. It's fucking hard. But yeah, he was like, bro, like he he picked up a he. I guess when Sammy Yofa, uh, for those who don't know who he is, he plays with uh, Michael Monroe. Um, yeah, he, they, they were doing some sort of session, and uh, yeah, and <laughs> Dragon picked up the bass and tried to, try to do something, and within five minutes, I think he got a blister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but no, just, uh, just starting off as being a guitar player. Um, you know, I'll nerd out on gear with him. Um, you know, you know, stuff prior to, uh, Backyard Babies and the helicopters and then, uh, and then the plus, this is, I think what would be the seal is he's a hockey fan, a huge hockey fan. Oh, oh, you know, yeah, those motherfuckers love hockey, obviously. Yeah. All of them motherfuckers. And of course, you know, he, he likes to drink. I'm cool with that. I don't smoke cigarettes, so I can't have a smoke with him, but, <laughs> you know, but for the most part, yeah, like, um, yeah, just, I, I think it would be a pretty good time killer, you know, it would be very interesting to hear his stories, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah, Dragon, and just, he's a, just, he's an animal, you know, he, he's, he's the guy that you want to roll up to your party, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, who would you pick? Uh I have a fairly boring answer, <laughs> a very like the, I have a very it's like Mike Ness. dad <laughs> answer. No, 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 and not actually not my guess. I I I uh it's yeah, it's a really boring answer. It's uh Keith Richards. Really? Yeah, hell yeah. Nice. Yeah, cuz honest uh there's this is gonna sound like, like I said, this is like a very dad answer. There's there's no better rock and roll guitarist than Keith Richards. And I would love to just sit there and just talk about rock and roll guitar, mm. his approach to playing guitar. Yeah. And if I'm gonna be if I'm gonna be real, he's like the only not only, but pretty much the Rolling Stones or the like the only group that acknowledges um, the uh, black influence on rock and roll. Oh yeah, a hundred percent, hands down. So, so like, it, I just would love to pick his brain just about music and his approach to playing guitar because uh, everything he does. Because I'm not a very precision based guitarist. I've always l- uh, liked the kind of sloppy just you know rock and roll mm-hmm. approach to playing guitar and i would just very noisy love, very loud guitars yeah very loud guitar and just you know just kind of just sleazy just hanging out in the back you know mm-hmm. it's like it's like just rhythm bass guitar and then just throwing like a little lead here and there mm-hmm. just hanging just hanging out doing what you need to do for the fucking song yeah nothing Nothing just nothing real bloated. That's my favorite thing about Rolling Stone. I mean, obviously they'll now that they're like older, they'll fucking play like a fucking nine minute song or whatever. But like <laughs> that's 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 still less than a lot of fucking bands that we grew up with. They'll play a fucking fifteen minute song. It's like all right, fucking get it over with. Yep, I totally get wild. It. But yeah, other than that, um, that's an interesting pick. Definitely, like that's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I fucking love the Stones, man. The Stones are I amazing. Love Keith Richards, I love the way Keith Richards plays guitar, man. Now imagine all of us were on that same flight, and we were all together. 
Oh man, it was just if it was just us, dude. Damn. It's just, fuck. Can you imagine Dragon, Keith Richards, and Bill Ward? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Laying, that, laying down a track. That's a laying down a track. That that's a hell of a lineup. Oh damn, I'm horny. I'm hey, horny, for real. Dude. Damn. I might I might have to go out to the strip and look for uh look for a little hottie. <laughs> 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 look for a little hottie. I'll go to one of the Vegas. I'll go to one of the wedding chapels and look for the bridesmaids and be like, "Hey, what's up?" I'll be like, "Keith Richards, <laughs> Keith Richards, Bill Ward, and Dragon." I'm like, "Let's go, horny time." <laughs> horny time. <laughs> like, hey, you ever, uh, you ever heard of the helicopters? <laughs> And this is brought to you by Trojan Condom. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Trojan Condom. Trojan man. Condoms way too fucking expensive for the poverty line. Trojan wow. Condom. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, Trojans are fucking expensive. What the fuck? So you get the no-name ones. <laughs> uh, um, Sir, I'm a proper Mexican. I don't do that. He does the pull-out method. <laughs> yes, since day one. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sick ass, Ru. We got it. We got a sick ass bop over here. <laughs> Loke ass fool. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, like not on like not on any like sort of bullshit, but um. I've been thinking about something that I always found funny since it's uh, it's kind of a relevant topic. Um, people are talking about like how cultural appropriation isn't a thing, mm-hmm. and we were talking about, we were talking about how uh, uh, the Rolling Stones are like pretty much the only band from the '60s who took stuff from black rock and roll artists. And they still acknowledge that, like, yeah, rock and roll is a black thing. Yeah, like yeah. Lemmy was like one of the Lemmy was like one of the last people to acknowledge that he's like, we all we owe everything we do to Little Richard. Mm-hmm. That's you know? very true. So all the all the British cats got it, but um, there's like a a large uh, a large group of people that <laughs> are not acknowledging that like cultural appropriation is a thing and i think it's kind of silly but uh (laughs) i uh the biggest thing in our community uh, we as we can acknowledge that i don't i don't know if a lot of people know about this i mean if you grew up in southern california i feel like you do know about this but the biggest (laughs) cultural appropriation in our community is the fucking nazi lowriders oh my god (laughs) right okay am, uh, am i wrong (laughs) <laughs> Am I wrong? Nah. It's a bu- it's a it's a bunch of a bunch of fucking loked ass loke loked out ass fucking white fools with fucking Nazi tattoos, but they love fucking lowrider culture. Uh, it... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I just think that's so fucking funny, man. It is. It is. It's it's Oh my god, dude! It's it's like, damn. I think you, I, I think you guys look sick as fuck. But like, I wish you would all die. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's oh, yeah. Man. That's essentially what it is. That's exactly what it is. Like, if you ever like, I don't know if I don't know if anybody's listening from outside of California because I, I think it's exclusively like a California thing, right? It's like Hell's Angels. It's like exclusively like a California thing. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you mean, low riding in general or Nazi low riders? Oh, no, Nazi low riders. Oh, like, that's like an exclusively like California. No, that's thing, just right? a California thing, dude. Because yeah. honestly, I'm sure, like, yeah, because I'm sure there are like pop up groups here and there, but yeah, for the most mm-hmm. part, it's it's got to be California, you know? Yeah. It just it's so funny, like I like if anybody's listening outside of the out of, outside of Southern California or California in general, just look up no, Nazi lowriders. It's, like you can look at those fools and just be like, 
oh damn, those look like cholos. But like you look at all their tattoos, it's like mm-hmm. 1488, like SS and like swastikas and shit. You're like, wait, 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 what the fuck? <laughs> like, oh shit, that's fucked up. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, I don't, I, I just, it's so weird to just to be like, yeah, no. I like all that shit like you do, but like I just don't I don't fuck with you as a human being. Mm-hmm. Also, like I don't uh I'm on some shit. Like before we before we get on to like our main topic. Did you guys see that shit I posted on Facebook uh today? I haven't been no, on Facebook all day. So. Oh yeah. It was essentially uh about uh, uh, closing the borders between uh, U.S. and Mexico, and it was uh, how only it's how it's only been a, like a recent thing in our history. Like it's it, we people people used to pass like from Mexico to U.S. Mm-hmm. just freely up until about 1917. And all, all the shit that they used to do, and how uh, Nazi Germany actually adopted the uh, tactics of the West to uh, to their concentration camps. Mm-hmm. So I will challenge anybody and fight anybody who says that uh, what we're doing in the United States aren't concentration camps. So anybody want to run up? I don't give a shit. Let's go. I'll fucking suck you in the goddamn throat. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Anti-fascism all goddamn day. Well, that's, the, that's the way. That's the way it's going to come down to, anyways, because nobody wants to um, learn anymore. They just want to argue. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know, and it, people aren't willing to like listen and talk. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't it, even want to accept the fact that there are concentration camps. You know what I mean? They just want to sweep it under uh, a rug. I know. People, people. Like we'll say that oh that's a loaded that's a loaded phrase and they don't want to uh, say that that's an actual thing mm-hmm. when it's actually it's it's exactly what it is it doesn't it doesn't start and stop at the Holocaust like right well because and also just, yeah because everyone thinks it has to be exactly like that to qualify but that's not true you know as long as someone's in prison it mm-hmm. it can be compared you know. Mm-hmm. That's, it is. That's yeah, like exactly. saying it's, that's like saying what we did to the Japanese uh, yeah, during true. World War Two. No, exactly. Was, well, it wasn't exactly. as bad as the Jews, so it's like uh, okay. So we're supposed to just you know be like, good thing yeah. we didn't put them in concentration camp, but we did. Yeah, we did. You exactly. know, they just called them labor camps. But that's exactly, and some of these are actual labor camps, just because they're not death camps Mm -hmm. like they were in Auschwitz yeah they're not actual death camps doesn't mean they're not concentration camps Mm -hmm. I just uh, doesn't make any fucking sense it's upsetting Mm -hmm. it really is Uh, if I mean I'll 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 even include the link to uh, the video that I just saw uh today because it's uh uh, there's a couple uh, terms and phrases that I knew about, but there's also a couple things that I know none of us learned about in his uh, American history, especially uh, growing up as you know brown people in Southern California. I know we didn't learn that. I just a couple of these things I just barely learned about today. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll throw that in the link. But yes, so uh, I will fucking fight you if you don't if you don't call them concentration camps. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what this fucking band's about. God damn it! It's about fucking truth, justice, shaking ass, and fucking rock and roll. God damn it! <laughs> Anywho. Uh, <laughs> So I've been on a roll with movies and the first movie that I did was uh, Godzilla 98 and the second movie I did 
was blackout was face off <laughs> was fuck you i will kick oh fuck you i was gonna say i'll kick your ass but i know you'll kick my ass in a heartbeat <laughs> but um <laughs> the second movie was uh face i almost called it blackout you motherfucker <laughs> uh was face off in 97 and this week we will be reviewing a movie that is pretty fucking close to my heart from 96. Yep. And, and um, it's called Mars Attacks. <laughs> it's actually called Ak 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 Ak. Exclamation point. <laughs> oh, <God. That's> so <laughs> good. And, um, <laughs> an in in-depth review because I feel like we all have a lot of shit we want to say about this movie because I feel like we all really enjoyed it. Uh, what are your first impressions uh, of seeing it like for the first time in a while? Uh, so the last the last time I saw it was um, I was in elementary school yeah, and I remember I remember it like being like oh my god that's so violent so scary. And so that's kind of what's stuck in my head all this time. But watching it now, um, it was nothing like that. It was, but it was a, it was still really fun, you know. Obviously, but my impression really changed on it. Yeah, the movie still and holds John? up. The movie still really holds up, but uh, yeah, just um, <laughs> last time I saw it with him, it was yeah, I was in, I was in grade school still. <laughs> So, yeah, the last time the last time I saw it, well, I was probably like, I think in high school, and that was like the first time I'd seen that uh, the end of the movie. Because uh-huh. I I remember like bits and pieces of it, but uh, uh, I'm gonna be honest, uh, I uh, I dragged my family to go see it when I was like three. I was like, hell yeah, let's go see that, <laughs> and. Uh, about 30 minutes into the movie uh, when uh, the Martians show up and start blasting everybody, I like freaked out. I was like, oh, hell no. I was like, <laughs> I was spooked the fuck out. I had to fucking dip out. I don't I don't even know if my parents got a refund, but <laughs> yeah. So I, I didn't, I didn't see like the movie until like, I was like way older and, uh, my first impressions of saying it again, kind of dope. But uh, uh, you guys uh, want to get into it now? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, so let's go into some uh, facts about it. Uh, do you guys know the box office? Yup. No. Do you guys? I don't have. I don't, personally, I, I don't have any facts on it. I, I'm just throwing in my two cents as you guys do it. I think you guys will probably. Uh, Kick it out of the park, you know. Hit it out of the park with the facts. <laughs> hey, have you got the you got the box office on this? Yeah. So this one ended up making a hundred and one point four million uh, in its total <laughs> box office run. However, <laughs> the budget was seventy million, so this was actually considered a flop when it came out. Jesus Christ, yeah. dude. Yeah, because in the U.S. it only made thirty-seven million. It made all its money like in China and Russia, everywhere else. Oh, really? Yeah. Could you believe that? Like, that's looking back on this now. I'm like, that's insane. This movie it flopped. It's still considered to this day a big box office flop. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's freaking nuts. I know, I can't believe that, but also, do you guys remember uh, Independence Day with Will Smith? Yeah. Yeah, that movie came out earlier in the year, and some people think that's kind of what killed Mars Attacks, you know, because they were like, well, we already got an alien movie, we don't want to see another one. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I, I could see that, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I prefer this movie, but... I know oh, yeah. back then, you know, that was like the big thing. It was like one of the, I guess, one of the bigger movies of the of the year at the time. That would be like another like dinosaur movie coming out 
You know when Jurassic Park did, right? Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, shit, man. Did you know this is, it was based off of fucking, uh, uh, trading cards? Yeah, yeah by Tops. <laughs> yep, Tops trading cards. Uh, they did like a uh, run of like, like kind of like EC Comics style trading cards of, uh, like Martians, like abducting people and all this other shit, and uh, it was uh, <laughs> it was uh, kind of controversial because uh, parents would see like these trading cards that these kids were picking up, and they're like, "Oh my god, what are you? What is this? This is violent, and this and that, and the third. And this was <laughs> like, like in the sixties, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I could imagine back then everything, you know, they yeah, were well, offended by uh, all that stuff. Oh, de- well, Tim Burton was heavily influenced by like 1950s and 60s, like sci fi B movies, you know? Yeah. Oh, and you can definitely movie, tell from this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was like, it was based off those, uh, <laughs> those trading cards. And like, that's, hey, I mean, if you know anything about EC Comics, that's how, that's how we got the uh, comic code in the, U- the United States, is, you know, <laughs> like, violence and shit like that. So, like, you, you can only imagine being, like, a, a parent in the, in the 1960s and seeing, like, some aliens, like, <laughs> like, ray gunning, like, some random farmer and just being like, what the fuck? <laughs> Very well, true. Shit. And uh, there was another thing that uh, Tim Burton wanted the uh, Martians to be uh, stop motion. Yeah, he wanted everything animated. That would have been that would have been pretty cool to see that, honestly. But um, it would have been fucking expensive. Yeah, that was one of the reasons they had to go with the CGI. But honestly, we talked about 9D CGI like two episodes ago, uh, how it's mostly shitty. But this one is not that bad. Nah, this one was yeah. at all. I I I thought it was gonna be absolute dog shit. Yeah, we'll I, talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. But uh, the scenes between uh, like Sarah Jessica, Jessica Parker and uh, Pierce Brosnan, I was like, that actually doesn't look too bad. <laughs> as much as I thought it was gonna look like dog shit, but I was like, it doesn't look too bad. Abe, uh, you got any other interesting facts that I'm missing out on? Yeah, I have one for the skeletons, or I should say, you know, when people get vaporized and you only see their skeleton. Uh, oh right, yeah, yeah. If you notice that uh, all of them are either green or red, and that was mm-hmm. done on purpose uh, because the movie was set to premiere near um, Christmas time, so they did that oh. intentionally. What? Yep. And and this isn't the first time those skeletons have showed up. Supposedly, uh, you see green and red skeletons in Beetlejuice. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, I haven't watched that one in a long time either, but I believe it. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure it's there. Holy shit. I, yeah, no, dude, I haven't seen Beetlejuice since I was, like, five. Oh, my God. So... Beetlejuice. Yeah, that's a Holy good one, too. Sh- what the fuck? No, no, I, I'm a big old idiot. So, like, I'm kind of freaking out. Like, what the shit? We're gonna have to go Don't back and review me. that one now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, the, we'll get the, we'll get back to whatever <laughs> was that like, fucking eighty-eight or some shit. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking nerd. I fucking love that movie. Hey, come on, we shop at the same place. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that movie. Yeah, but that was pretty much the end of um, the like the little notes that I had. I don't know if you have anything, Kirby. Oh uh, shit! Let me see. I'm gonna just check real quick. Uh, I got a couple, but like I, I mean, I feel like we talked about them all. I'm gonna throw something out there for the record. When they finally, yeah. uh, when they get that that uh, that machine where it. Um, <laughs> where it's supposed to uh, translate into English. 
Oh and yeah. Carson running around with it, and they're <laughs> they're like, "We come in peace." Like, uh, and it's like, "Oh, like uh, we come in peace. We're not here to hurt you." And they're just fucking blasting everyone. Yes, that was amazing. Shit's oh my god, dude, so good. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything particular, so we can just get into it. Yeah, that's fine. Let's get into. It. Uh, well, first of all, so since I haven't seen this movie since I was like a teenager and I barely remember it because I was like, I was probably like in and out of it. The fucking opening credits of this movie. How many fucking people were in this goddamn movie? Holy yeah, shit. Sure. I know. Like, it's scat. Like, yeah, I was like, what is the fucking budget? Well, we know what the budget of the movie is now since we talked about it, but I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I feel you like fucking Jack. Ni- yeah, yeah. Go yeah, ahead. It's insane. It's like Jack Nicholson, Pierce Brosnan, Michael J. Fox, Sarah Jessica Parker, Glenn Close. Just all these Jack Black people. is in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Jack Black is in there for like five minutes. Spoiler, yeah. but no. But I feel like some of these people maybe they just wanted to work with Tim Burton, so they agreed to do it for cheap. Because I, I don't feel, oh, yeah. I feel like no studio was going to allow that many people to be in there. You know, they weren't going to pay for that budget. No, hell no. <laughs> but yeah, so like right out the gate, I was like, what the fuck? It's, oh, oh yeah, Natalie Portman's in it. for like, I'm probably like a, a, a total amount of like maybe five minutes. Spoiler. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> She's Jack Nicholson's uh, daughter. Yeah, but I mean, seriously though, that's a stacked cast. Insane, dude. Yeah, and then it um, where does it go from there? That's some shit. I didn't. I leave. I leave my notes open. God damn it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then we just take off from there. We just rocking and rolling. Yeah, the that's the cool. Rolling up. Yeah, that's the cool thing about this one. It just kind of it starts off like on a high note, and it pretty much just goes. You know, it goes with <laughs> yeah. the flow. It doesn't really dip at all. Mm-hmm. It is definitely a. Um, I wouldn't say a a parody. Of 1950s B movies, it's kind of, kind of like more of an homage to 1950s B movies. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't feel like it's uh, necessarily like shitting on 1950s like horror movies. I feel like it's definitely an homage. The only thing that it's really shitting on, and I know I don't want people to be like, oh, this motherfucker, all he does is fucking talk about politics. It's more of like <laughs> like shitting on our uh, uh, American approaches to like <laughs> uh, conflict. <laughs> you know? Very oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that is like a big point in it. You know, they kind of, you know, they poke fun at the presidents and generals and all that. Um, yeah, exactly. Like then, the, the, yeah. Right off the bat, dude, like that guy's like, okay, like, you know, what are we gonna do about these marching? He's like, all right, Mr. President. He's like, I have it all planned. He's like, this is our agenda. I just need you to sign here, and we nuke him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, that's the solution that's the, for everything. Oh yeah, that was the fun. That was like the funniest part, like in the beginning. When he's like, all right, yeah, yeah, no, we yeah, you know, we gotta figure it out. Uh, yeah, uh, sign this. And he's like, oh, um, what's that? Oh yeah, that's the uh, that's the nuclear launch. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, well, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Like, the best part is when they counter when they counter done it, the aliens, oh, the Martian. Yeah. Oh yeah, way at the end, yeah, yeah. And he sucks it in <laughs> when he gets all high on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then yeah, so all that. Well, so you, know, um, everyone's like getting ready for like the Martians to show up. Well, you have and that scene, they, too, where the, what is it, like, cows? They're, like, set on fire. Oh, yeah, that's the beginning. Yeah, they, the all the cows are on fire. Yeah, that was pretty it. disturbing. That shit is traumatizing. <laughs> it was. I'm not going to lie. Amanda didn't like that shit. 
So I, it, that feels like the most realistic, um, as far as the violence goes, that felt the most realistic of the whole movie, I thought. <laughs> yeah. it's, the one, it, it's the one that felt the worst because they're all running and they're going like, move. Yeah, and when it's still serious at that time, like nothing really funny was going on yet. Yeah, it felt fucking bad, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it also felt bad because like the, the, the opening scene of the movie is the fucking like farmer being a racist. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's like, "What is it? Fucking Filipino New Year or some shit?" I was like, "Oh man, what the fuck!" Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, that happens, and then fucking mm-hmm. um, so the whole world knows that there's a bunch of Martian spaceships floating around Earth, and uh, everyone's trying to get a news scoop and all this, and then shit happens. So, like twenty minutes go by. And then uh, they finally meet up. It was in it's in Nevada, right? Yeah. Well, they yeah. Meet up in Nevada. Yeah, it mainly focuses in Nevada, but then like it jumps around from like it's like New York, Nevada. Um, later on, they touch DC. Basically, like yeah, DC, um, London, shit like that. Yeah. So they all uh, all the uh, uh, military forces and all the. Uh, uh, news media roll up in uh in the, the Nevada desert. That's where mm-hmm. they all meet with him. Uh, but uh, the president is still in D.C. Yeah, he <laughs> sends one of his so, uh, his captains <laughs> to greet. Yeah, the... they uh, <laughs> <laughs> to greet the Martians. Yeah, and so they're all out there. Oh yeah, and um, so uh, another side note: fucking um, people are uh, joining the military. As mm-hmm. you see with Jack Black, who's uh, who's uh, also fucking <laughs> Joe Don Baker is uh, Jack Black's father, mm-hmm. which I absolutely loved. I I didn't remember that. So Joe Don Baker, I was like, oh shit! <laughs> I was like, he's a new motherfucker. I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> uh, so, oh, and that's um, when they have that translator too, right? That changes yeah. the Martian talking. So the people are joining the military, and you see Jack Black. He goes to the military because you know there's Martians rolling up on Earth, and so when the Martians roll up uh, to Nevada, and we we have this shitty translator with a uh, spoiler, a, a translation machine that does not work. <laughs> they meet up with the uh, the American military. And they're like, hey, man, we come in peace and this and that. And then uh, they're like, uh, yeah, we come in peace, too. But guess what? Um, that's not what they say. And they blast homeboy right out the gate. And they start <laughs> lighting fools up. Everyone's dead. Yep. Everyone's getting lit the fuck up. Michael J. <laughs> Fox is dead. <laughs> Fucking everybody's dead. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, <laughs> I saw online that uh, some people were confused at that scene. They saw it... Um... That releasing that dove is what like they the Martians perceived that as an attack, but uh, they were gonna they were gonna annihilate them anyways, right? Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, because that's what I figured. I'm like, no, like that I that's what I got from it. Like they were just gonna shoot them anyways, regardless. Yeah, it was like it was a shitty translation, but like yeah, we're gonna we're gonna fucking kill you. We're yeah, Mars attack, baby, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because you see later on that they're kind of like pranksters. They like to kind of mess with you, like if they're going to sympathize with you. <laughs> yeah, they're just going to fuck with you and take over your planet, man. It's all good, baby. You know the vibes. <laughs> yeah, you know the vibes. Yeah, it was great. So they fucking light everyone up. Jack Black dies in a blaze of glory, which a little Easter egg <laughs> later, uh, you see that Jack Black is on the cover of uh, Time Magazine as a war hero. Oh, I didn't even notice that. That's funny. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, when they go back to the trailer, like way on in the way later on in the movie, you know, like uh, when Homeboy goes back to the trailer, like they 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 have that like little shrine in his honor. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, right. right. Yeah. Right, right next to Joe Joe Don Baker, Joe Don Baker's character. There's a Time Magazine character. And it's got it's got Jack Black with the American flag. Oh, that's like, awesome. you know, like, like right before he dies, he's on the cover of Time magazine. It's just funny as fuck. It's amazing. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then <laughs> chaos ensues from there. Then yeah. I've been on it. Pretty much. They're, uh, they blow up everything. They're blowing up shit all over the world. <laughs> when, when, the, when they shot down the, the monument... <laughs> The Washington, uh, yeah, the Washington. Oh Monument. yeah, the Washington Monument. And they They're like it, playing they kept, with it. Yeah, they kept moving it oh, to yeah. try to get the Boy Scouts. Yeah, they did. They were like, "Oh shit, it's falling this way." Oh wait, there's Boy Scouts over there. Okay, no, let's move it so we can land it on the Boy Scouts. <laughs> yeah, that shit was that's what made fucking. Yeah, weird. that's what made me laugh too. I'm like, why are they still having field trips and all that if they know the world is under attack? Right. Hey man, look at America right now. Obviously, we don't give a shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, you know, all that shit's happening. They blow up the fucking. They blow up the British Parliament. They blow up the fucking Taj Mahal. All that shit. But there's also like a, a like little interesting story about like a family on the opposite ends of the country, which is nice. Yeah, that was cool. That was a heartwarming story. Shout out to right. Tim Burton. Right, but that's what kind of made me laugh too, because um, going, you know, for all the people that are in this movie, I felt like there's really no central character. Mm-hmm. It kind of just jumps around from the yeah. president. Then you have um, the, you know, the younger black family, and then you see like the people in the trailers, and it just kind of bounces around. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it definitely b- it bounces around. Like, I, gu- I guess if you're like looking at it from like a, a cinematic filmmaker standpoint, like you're like, oh, there's no real direction to this movie. But I was like, you can say that about a million and a half movies that are enjoyable. Like, let's, it's not, it's not a fucking film course. Just watch a fucking movie, you know? Yeah, and that, yeah, and that's really what it felt like. Like Tim Burton just wanted to do a fifty sci-fi horror movie and. He just went wild with it, you know? Yeah, and that's... It, it did its fucking job. It's definitely a 50s sci-fi horror movie. It's... Yeah. If it... I would love... I kind of would love to see this movie in black and white. I was about <laughs> to say that. Did you know there is a version that's in black and no. white? Yeah. No I've, way. I've seen... Uh, I was going through Reddit today, and people were talking about it, and they say, it like, if you watch it like that now it makes everything better because, you know, the CGI doesn't look as bad in black and white. No so way. It, it might even be a better experience like that. Oh, I, I would love it. to do yeah. that. Yeah. That's incredible. You know, wow, so that's, that's something, awesome. that's something if we ever rewatch this on our own time, we could try it. <laughs> yeah, because it's funny because, like, if you watch all those, like, 50s, like, horror, like, B-movies, there's like six fucking storylines going on in those movies. So realistically, he did like a perfect job. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he's it, it's really an homage to all those fucking movies. It's not shitting yeah. on those movies at all. No, not at all, you know. And then uh shit, I didn't even mention it when I brought that up, but uh he's also a fan of uh 70s like uh like big tragedies, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you That's know. why I was happy, like, kind of ended on, like, a really, really high note. Mm-hmm. I know, yeah, because knowing him, it could have ended, like, a lot worse. <laughs> he ended horribly. Could have, like, blew up the earth or something. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah, but... so, you know, they're blowing shit up and everything, and then uh, there's, a, uh, there's other stories about people in Vegas uh, like you know, there's a black family that lives across the country, and you know he's just trying to get home. He's trying to make money for them, working in Vegas. The, the boxer, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I That's mean, he's, he, yeah, he's like a retired boxer, but now he just works in the casino. I thought yeah, that was yeah, pretty that was, cool. Yeah, he, he, uh, uh, oh, he's as the Egyptian guy. <laughs> yeah, he just clocks the I, shit out of that Martian. <laughs> So I know <laughs> shit was funny. Knocks him the fuck out. He's like, no weapons. He, He's like, I use my fist. And after the Martian's like, all right, like. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. He just like starts taking all of them on right there. That was awesome. Yeah, but um, oh yeah. Before we before we get to the end of the movie, because essentially it's just you know Martian chaos up until the end of the movie. But yeah. 
fucking um before we get there there's a martian that dresses up as a lady because we find out the press secretary is like a big old horn dog yeah <laughs> so Mar- martin short is a big old horn dog which i thought was hilarious yeah <laughs> martin short like infam like infamously just like kind of like a wholesome fucking character on like everything hmm. he's just and a big saying, old horn yeah he's the polar opposite in this <laughs> So we call this the, the fucking... Kennedy Lounge. <laughs> the Kennedy Lounge. That was the best part. So he oh, meets up with this shit. uh this beehive haired like Martian lady, which we don't know is a Martian lady, but we'll, we know it. <laughs> we we know is a Martian lady. He doesn't, since he's such a horn dog. And he meets up with her, and he's like, "Yeah, hell yeah, I'll take you in the White House for like a little tour." And then he's like, "I'll take you to the Kennedy Lounge." And he's like, "Yeah, we fuck in the Kennedy Lounge." <laughs> <laughs> and then this he finds out it's a fucking Martian, and he bites his fuck, uh, bites his finger. Uh, bites yeah, his that was badass. That shit, it was cool. That shit was cool. I was like, "Hell yeah, fucking!" Then they tossed it in the go. fish tank, right? The, yeah, and the fish are like, "Oh, what the fuck we do with this?" Yeah. <laughs> That was fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wait, see, like, also, there's a... Yeah, like, that part was just straight-up violent, but it was hilarious, you know? <laughs> the opposite of the also, cow scene. Also, um, fucking weird fact that I learned, uh, that was Tim Burton's wife. Really? What? Yeah, and apparently she still has scars from the fucking wig. No oh way, God. that's crazy. Isn't that fucking... Isn't that a fucking trip? Wow. Like, holy shit, dude. I wonder if that's, like, the only film she's done or if she's uh, been in other things. I I, I don't have that information on hand. I, I don't know. <laughs> if only we were better <laughs> podcasters, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I, I thought I did, but I fucking... I don't. God damn it. And that's pretty I cool, don't. though. Yeah, that's a yeah, trip. damn fucking fucking it up for the craft, brother. <laughs> right, <laughs> she's down for her art. Yeah, or her husband. Either way, she's like, or she's trapped and doesn't know where to go. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> or it's an abusive relationship. No, um, <laughs> uh, the, oh, I, uh, I, the, in the video game, I don't, I don't want to get sued. Um, uh, uh, Tim Burton, don't sue me. That was a joke. Please don't see me. Um, I'm sure he's gonna hear this. <laughs> I, man, fucking lawyers are everywhere. I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, so she buys <laughs> she buys Martin Short's finger off, and um, they find out it's an alien, a little Martian guy. He's running around, so he goes up to the uh, where uh, President Jack Nicholson. I don't even remember his actual name. Uh, the president. So they like, call him President Jack. I think it was like Dale or something. I call him the uh, anger no, management guy. Was, yeah, it was yeah. Like, <laughs> anger man. Actually, I do love that movie, by the way. Well, I got that that's your go-to, though, thing. for Jack Nicholson. I know. What the fuck? The Joker, The Shining. There's, like, anger management. <laughs> <laughs> because Johnny's an angry motherfucker. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, fucking Martian rolls up to the where they're sleeping, and uh, the Secret Service. <laughs> oh, what the fuck and oh no oh first the, the fucking martian blasts the fucking dog oh, oh yeah that was funny <laughs> oh shit the dog's like ar, ar, and it's like oh fuck you then yeah. just blast that motherfucker yeah, well, I mean he did his job because he alerted the president you know <laughs> yeah. anger management <laughs> <laughs> that dog got some anger management got blasted bro. right <laughs> and he was a red skeleton. <laughs> he's a red, he's a red skeleton for Christmas, baby. Uh, so, um, yeah, the, uh, fucking Martian tries to kill them both, but it gets a hold of President Jack Nicholson and uh, uh, unsuccessfully uh, gets murked yeah. by the Secret Service. <sighs> yeah, yeah, and then Jack Jack Nicholson has all that green goo on him. Yeah. Uh, all that green goo, he got a big old Martian nut on him. <laughs> the Martian nut. Yeah, so that happens. And then we we go back to uh, Vegas where... Also, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, uh, who's listening or hasn't seen this movie. 
Jack Nicholson is doing double duty in this movie. He plays two f- fucking characters. Yeah, he does. Yep. <laughs> he plays two characters. He is all. He is not only the president, but a real fucking scumbag piece of shit trying to make money in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> he's the fucking cowboy guy. <laughs> I know. A, fucking cowboy dude. Yeah. That that is yeah, that uh, is like a satire though on um well I mean just businessmen in general, like especially here in the US, you know, it doesn't matter what's going on, uh, they're gonna try to profit from it. The galaxy is yep, exactly. everyone's mind when it opens up. <laughs> oh, also oh I have another actually I did come up with some straight facts, man. Do you so uh when they when the Martians roll up on that uh his little business venture in that uh, that tower. Mm-hmm. Did you know that it used to be a building in Vegas? Yeah. Do you know it's not there anymore because they actually blew it up? Yeah. Yeah, it was scheduled. They, it was scheduled to be imploded, right? And they just like worked yes, it in. They're yeah. They were like, oh, word. So can we film that? <laughs> and that's pretty cool because that that oh. was a good shot. Yeah. That was a great shot. Oh, it's such a good shot. They're like, oh, you're y'all gonna blow that up? Oh, hey, you mind you mind if we uh film that real quick? Mm-hmm. Oh, and it looks so good too. That shit's awesome, dude. It looks so good. You know, like but uh, like not even just that, dude, like the fact that like even like when they show the scene where they're kind of like in that boneyard, you know? The boneyard with like all the like yep. the broken neon signs yeah. and stuff like oh you know, yeah that, that's an actual place and then the fact that like oh yeah oh, if if anyone's never been to Vegas that's a real place yeah I, I would highly that's recommend definitely a real it. place highly recommend it you know it was filmed on site and then not only that you know just people that are fans of Tim Burton uh, last year he had and he teamed up with them and done. Uh, an exhibition there, and uh, four of his pieces yeah. he left there. He donated them. So there's an Area 51 piece. There's a Las Vegas piece. There's a Beetlejuice sign, mm-hmm. and then inside yeah. the lobby, there's a Guns and Booze uh, piece as well. So definitely, mm-hmm. definitely something to to look into. You know, like if you're into like classic Americana vintage you know like neon sign yeah neon vintage sign bullshit it, it's awesome there's a, there's a lot of I, good- I don't mean to i don't mean to i don't mean to call it bullshit but that's just that's what i call all things that i like just to downplay yeah. everything <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, another thing too like even when this was filmed it was nice to see like uh like uh you know like the hotel la concha you know like that was around at the time oh uh, yeah you know like if, yeah. if, if you go to the neon sign, you know, when you enter the main lobby, that's actually the Loconcha um, lobby. They moved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They told them that, hey, we'll donate it to you. You guys just got to move it. <laughs> so I, they broke it, yeah. I think, eight pieces. And then it took them, um, I forgot how long it took them to rebuild it, but it cost a hell of a lot of money. Yeah, so, uh, Six hundred thousand dollars, I believe, to rebuild it. Wow, really? Yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it's pretty cool, you know. But yeah, just seeing a few of those uh, old hotels that were still there, you know, like the Frontier, La Concha. Um, what was it? There was another one too. Um, just trying to think vividly, but yeah, so it was cool seeing those, you know, back when they were still doing good. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I know, this really is like a time then, capsule uh, of the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really is, man. And, uh, well, shit, before we even get there, we need to talk about something major. What was that? Danny DeVito. Oh, Danny yeah. fucking DeVito. Uh, the trash man. The, tra- the trash man. As wrestling fans would know him. The trash man. No. Uh, no. Fucking yeah, Danny fucking DeVito's in it. Yep. Uh, and not not only Danny fucking DeVito, the curly haired god, 
<laughs> Tom fucking Jones. <laughs> and those were his real Tom those Jones. were his real dancers too that he used in Vegas. Yeah. He- Hell fucking yeah, it was. It's not unusual it's, to be loved by anyone. It's so, it's so <laughs> sick. He just, he just sitting there just singing his ass off, and then all of a sudden the Martians roll up. Yeah, there's a Martian and they, they, <laughs> Yeah. They, they, they blast everyone in the crowd, but they're like, wait, wait, wait. Is that Tom Jones? I uh, know. <laughs> seriously, they just kind of look and let him dip. They're like, act, they're like act. yeah, they kind of do. Act, act. They're like, they're like, they're like, act, act, Tom Jones, act, act. Okay. No, they were starstruck. Okay. They're like, "Oh shit, it's Tom Jones! Oh shit, we gotta mark everybody before we get mar- marked Tom Jones." <laughs> we, we, we have some semblance of respect for Tom Jones. <laughs> he sung his ass song. You guys hear when he sang Thunderball for the 007 mm-hmm. movie? Yeah, he sang his ass off for that shit. He said, "Hell no, we ain't gonna mark Tom Jones yet." Was it? We'll get him in five minutes. Wasn't what? But fuck this. Wasn't the guy from 007 in there? I'm not good with actors' names. Oh no! Uh, oh yeah, Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, he was an. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's. Uh... <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. We 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 failed to mention that. Uh, <laughs> they took Pierce Brosnan's head off because he's he's like the academic. Uh, he's like we have to communicate with the the Martians. <laughs> And they they still took his head off, anyways. <laughs> just, they they abducted him and took his head just off. Just speaking about that, dude. The Martians are fucking little perverts. This shit's funny. Oh, oh I know. Oh, yeah, they're looking at the Playboy. They're looking at the Playboys and shit. They were looking at that, and then that what's it called? That one couple that was like getting his nut on in the trailer. <laughs> oh, Christina oh, Applegate. Yeah, that's who it was. That's Christina Applegate. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah Kelly yeah. Bundy herself. <laughs> Kelly Bunny herself getting pounded in a trailer. <laughs> they were just there watching. They're like they're... just watch it, and they had the little wind. The yeah, they, they, yeah, they the fogged it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Cool. Wait. Fuck. Since we're talking about Pierce Brosnan's floating head, they put. <laughs> they put. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sarah Jessica Sarah Jessica Parker has a chihuahua throughout the movie. Uh huh. And um, it, it, fairly early on in the movie, they abduct her and the Chihuahua, and they put the Chihuahua's head on Sarah Jessica Parker's body, and they put her head on the Chihuahua's body. And <laughs> throughout the movie, Pierce Brosnan's floating head and uh, Sarah J- Jessica Parker's bo- uh, head on the little Chihuahua are talking to each other because they have a very flirtatious romance. <laughs> So that's the thing. Yeah, that was funny. It was just like it was so awkward seeing that, you know. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but I just, you know, you get over the ridiculous ridiculousness of it all. <laughs> yeah, it, it's because you're like, oh, this is just goofy. All right, fuck it, <laughs> whatever. So that's happening, and uh, they go through the fucking graveyard, the uh, neon sign graveyard. And Tom Jones is officially part of the uh, group now. And they're like, he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> well, so, and uh, then Danny DeVito gets murked. Remember that? He tries to oh, run oh, off. Yeah, I'll give you my watch. Actually, that, it was funny. I think I saw this movie like when I was like at a high school. And I, was, I think the last time I saw it was high. Uh, I was high. <laughs> so that's why I don't remember it very well. I just remember seeing Danny DeVito getting murked, and I was like, "Oh man, that sucks. <laughs> that's 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 not a good time. I don't want to see Danny DeVito die. That's not a good time." It was a pretty cool death, it, though. It was good. <laughs> yeah, he tries to give him his fucking watch. <laughs> he's like, "Come on, come on, come on." He's like, "Hey, it's it's a Rolex," and they're like, nah, nah, and they just blast him, <laughs> and then and then fucking <laughs> fucking. Was around his freaking blaster like he was like some western gunslinger. Yeah. Yep, yeah, hell yeah. That was great. He was so proud of himself. And then he got murked too. Yeah, he got boy. He got zapped the fuck out. (laughs) So anyways, the um uh Jack Nicholson's who's not the president's love interest 
is just trying to get to a plane so she can get out of there. And so she's taking like uh, Tom Jones and uh, I forget the black dude's name. I, I feel bad because it's actually like the most interesting fucking character, uh, like storyline in the movie. I cannot remember his character's name for the life of me. I just know. But he's dressed up as like. Yeah, I just know his, the actor is Byron Williams. Hell yeah. And I was like, that dude fucking rules. That dude's sick as shit. Oh, hell yeah. He didn't take any shit from anybody. <laughs> his name is Jim Brown. <laughs> is it? His character name? Yeah. His, yeah, his character's name is Jim Brown. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so I was like, fuck yeah. All right. So he's like, he's uh, he's rolling with the whole crew. And they're trying to get out of there. And they finally get to the hangar. And... <laughs> Oh, also, they have this random, uh, like, chick that's rolling with them, too, who's from the casino. Like, we don't even, I don't even think we know her, we end up knowing her name. Remember that, right? Yeah. They, so, like, we don't even know her fucking name. She's rolling with them. So Danny, Danny DeVito's dead. And then we got Tom Jones, this random white chick, and we got Jim Brown. And they all roll up to this ha- airport hangar because they're trying to get the fuck out of there. And <laughs> they're like, so so they put fucking, they put Tom Jones in the fucking cockpit. And the homegirl's like, you know how to drive this, right? And she's like, he's like, yeah, I mean, I think so. <laughs> I know, they didn't even have a plan. They were just like, let's, let's just try and fly out of here. Let's see if it works. <laughs> and Tom Jones like, I mean, fuck it. Yeah, I guess. I think. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, they're like, all right, cool. So Jim Brown, or uh, essentially the hero of the fucking movie, actually he's like the the hero of the fucking. Movie. We'll call him the fucking hero of the movie, other than the scrawny little white kid. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, son of a bitch. <laughs> so um, <laughs> this is kind of weird, but uh, <laughs> Johnny's having fucking technical difficulties that I don't know how to help him with. And he's not able to get back into the fucking podcast. He's officially off. So, he's officially... <laughs> that, that Vegas he's Wi-Fi. In the, he's in the group chat right now, and we're, and we're all laughing at him. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I I hope he listens to this, and I hope he hears us all laughing at him. You could you could just uh, edit in some laughing in the background right here. Uh, oh shit, no! It's just I'm laughing because this is great. <laughs> you guys can't see the group. Oh man, you are so amused. Fucking... Oh, this is great. I'm I hope I'm so mad that you guys can't see this because I'm fucking. I'm living for this. <laughs> we got another one. <laughs> Fuck you, Johnny. Suck my dick. You laugh at his misery. Uh, I thrive in his misery. All right. So anyways, <laughs> let's finish this bitch. Let's wrap it up. So fucking, yeah, Jim Brown. And, uh, he go, yeah, he, he goes he after the, the Martians to distract them. Martians, he said. Yeah, they open up the uh, the hangar doors, and there's, like, hella Martians. And he's like, you know what, fuck it. I'm a boxer. I'm going to fuck these fools up. So he rolls up to these all these Martians. And his, his Martian's like, not, nah, not. Nah. And he's like, all right, come up. Square up, then. Fuck it, fool. So this, <laughs> so his Martian is like, all right, not, nah, not. Nah. And he fucking takes his shit off, and he, they start... They start duking it out, and he starts fucking his full up. He tells them, and, like, heavyweight champion of the world. He gets all into it. Oh, that, yeah, that shit was heavy. Dude, that shit was heavy as fuck. He said, fuck all these Martians. So he took his, he took all his, like, little Vegas shit off, and he started duffing out this Martian. He fucked up that Martian. He fucked up another Martian. And they started fucking up all these other Martians. Yeah, and then and then all these Martians were like, yeah, they start to dogpile on him. Fuck no. 
And then, like, you see Tom Jones and, like, all the other people from Vegas, they were, like, in the plane. They looked down. And, like, oh, no, shit. That's when you start to get bummed out because, like, Jim Brown's trying to get back to his family, like, in uh, the D.C. area. And, by the way, I don't know if you all know this in other parts of the nation. Yeah, D.C. isn't all, you know, just bright and pretty. A lot, there's a big chunk of DC that sucks. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, so he's trying to get back to his family. Also, Pam Greer is the mom. Anybody who respects like seventies movies and like B movie cinema, y'all know who Pam Greer is. And if you don't know who Pam Greer is, look it up. Fuck y'all. Uh, I, I wanted more of her in this movie. She was really good. Oh, so did, so did I. I was like, oh, we need more Pam Greer. I was like, damn it, let's go. Let's fucking go. Cause, oh, damn, Pam, Pam Greer is the best. We can, we can agree well, like on that. that. that their whole cool. family arc was like um, the most emotional one in the movie. You know, it's the one you sympathize with the most. <laughs> yeah, that's why, that's why when you, because, I mean, as we get to the end of the movie, you, you think Jim Brown dies. Yeah, and I was legit bummed when that happened. I was like, oh, man, this, this guy's like the badass. He's a family man. And then he's, he's a boxer. Yeah. He, 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 started, he started duffing out Martian. Yeah, man. he, had, he had that ray gun, and he could have took out a bunch of them. And he's like, nope, I'm going to fight hand, hand-to-hand combat. So when, he, when you think yeah. that he's down, I was like, oh. He was like the one character I really liked. Yeah. Yeah, you see all those Martians jumping on him. You're like, damn, fuck, son of a bitch. Anyway, so the the Martians end up making it to um, like the secret headquarters of uh, the president, and uh, President Jack Nicholson dies. They kill him. <laughs> <laughs> he does like his he does like his epic speech. You know, he's trying to. Why can't we be friends? You know, we can. Mars and Earth can join together, and we can build a greater universe or we could destroy it together and they're, they're <laughs> that's the best yeah and they're like having none of it yeah no actually uh just like on a little side note i tried to um do that speech in theater in uh my freshman year of high school but they told me it was too short oh my I was god like, god damn it oh that would have been so like, epic so, i was like son of a bitch i was like i would have delivered that motherfucker God damn it. I know, it's too short. It's pretty long. <laughs> it is pretty long, but it wasn't, like, long enough. So I was like, I was like, it needed to be, like, I think, like, something close to, like, 500 words, and it was, like, like, 100 words shy or some shit. Oh, that's shitty. <laughs> I was like, son of a bitch. I was so fucking mad. I was like, God damn it, I would have fucking delivered the shit out of that. But uh, yeah, so uh, Martians killed the shit out of President Jack Nicholson. <laughs> yeah, he gets like, what is? It's like his hand, Impaling. but yeah, like it impales him with like a what is like? It, I know it's his hand, but it looks like a tail almost that comes out of yeah, it and then they, just impales oh, him. He, yeah, he fake shakes uh, President Jack Nicholson's hand, and it's uh, like a fake hand. And so when he's shaking, he's like, "Oh, all right, cool." And when he pulls back, he's like, oh, shit. And it's like a little, like, robotic, like, hand that starts crawling all over him, and it fucking just impales him. And President Jack Nicholson is dead. Big old rip. Yeah, big old rip. Uh, uh, so uh, we go back to another uh, another side story, uh, the, like the little trailer park family. There's this, like, skinny, scrawny little white dude. They put the they put their grandma in a home, and uh, it's in Nevada. So you know all these little Martians are tearing up all in Nevada. They're, uh, and then they get up to this nurse, <laughs> this like nursing home. They're just blasting everybody. So like, all all the grandmas and grandpas are getting lit up, all dead. And then they fucking uh, roll up in the little granny's room. And uh, she has a sh- uh, she has a hearing problem throughout the movie, so she like can't hear shit, and she doesn't she doesn't she can't, she can't, she cannot hear shit. So she's sitting there listening to her music, and it sounds like uh, 
you know, the little yodel, yodel kid, little Mason Ramsey. Yeah. <laughs> so she's sitting there listening to it, bobbing, you know, hanging out. And uh, these little fucking shitty prankster little Martians are like, oh, fuck yeah, we're going to fuck with this little old lady before we kill her. And so they like sneak up on her. And this little, this old little old lady, she fucking, she's like, she turns around, she goes, oh, hello. But when she turns around, she yanks out her headphones from the record player, and it's this fucking yodel shit, like I said, little Mason Ramsey, and just like, Hoo! and fucking Martians cannot handle it, because it's so, A, it's so loud, and it's just like at a frequency they cannot handle they're like, oh, 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 and they start grabbing their heads. It blows up all their little brains. Blows all their little brains up. So when the fucking kid rolls up, he's like, holy shit. We found a fucking cure to fucking kill all these Martians. So they start broadcasting at a little fucking uh, local frequency. And then the fucking government finds out. They start using it to fucking kill all the Martians. Yeah, and you have that scene of everyone going around like uh, in their pickup trucks with with the speakers blaring it, and then the military <laughs> has it too. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the funny part. Like the fucking military has like all these old honker ass fucking <laughs> speakers just blasting at these fucking Martians, and they're all running around holding their little fucking brains. They're like, Argh! oh, and that looked badass. <laughs> that did not look. It doesn't look dated at all. Like, when their heads are exploding, that just was straight cool. Yeah, it is cool because, like, uh, they're, um, when their brains splatter, it's, like, it's, they're in a, like, a, like, a spaceship, like, helmet, you know, like, cosmonaut helmet. It's, like, in glass. So, when it blows up, it doesn't, like, just splatter everywhere. It just explodes inside the glass. So, it's it's a really cool effect. So, they're running around, just, like, just splattering all over the glass. And then, um, (laughs) oh man, yeah, it's great. And so you see Martians all over the world just fucking around and they all just die because we're blowing them up with fucking Mason Ramsey. (laughs) (laughs) And then at the end of the movie, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, brown people control the government. Yeah, exactly. That's what happened. (laughs) <laughs> no, I mean I wish, but um, uh, the, there's a group of mariachis playing. Uh, was it? Was the Star Spangled Banner? Yeah, I believe so. And then we got Gra- they gave like Granny like a uh, fucking like Purple Heart or some shit. I don't know what the fuck it is. A Medal of Honor. I think it's yeah, a Medal it's of the Honor. President's daughter, right? She's and, the one giving the medals. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's like the last living member of the uh, presidential family. Yeah, I'm like, were they implying that <laughs> she's president now, or that's what I? I was like, um, okay, I guess. <laughs> president Natalie Portman. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, President Natalie Portman and her cabinet of uh, mariachi. Oh, see, now that's the sequel I want to see. <clears throat> Holy shit! I just. I spit everywhere right now because you made me laugh. <laughs> oh my god, I spit everywhere. <laughs> President Natalie Portman and her cabinet of mariachis. The sequel, the sequel <laughs> we deserve, but we'll probably never get. We won't get because Mars Attacks 2 was not that. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so they give the, the fucking Medal of Honor and shit and... Uh, <laughs> The uh, the little skinny white kid gives the uh, uh, the high school presentation about politics and be like, "Hey, why don't we just like get along and shit?" Yeah, he's like, "Why don't we live in teepees? <laughs> that would be better." Teepees. I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "What the hell is he talking about?" <laughs> it was like the stoner fucking equivalent of like government uh, when you learn in uh, high school. He's like, "Damn, why don't we just get along and live?" Like living teepees and shit, dude. He really was like a like a Shaggy <laughs> or um, a Jay and Silent Bob, where they kind of solved the problem, but <laughs> by accident. <laughs> he wasn't really heroic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he was like, 
Oh damn, Grandma's got like, like he, he had good intentions, but he wasn't like badass or anything. He just yeah, exactly. He just failed upwards. Yeah. Know? He failed into uh into heroism. Heroin? But the uh, what uh what do you mean Kirkabain? Oh shit. <laughs> uh or Lane Staley? All right, we're gonna lose people. Um <laughs> uh, Oh yeah. Oh what the real story the the good the heartwarming ass story at the end. Is that you see you you see oh yeah I forgot so we need to talk about this Pam Greer's kids and uh, uh, Jim Brown uh, they go on a tour of the White House like earlier in the movie uh, throughout the movie they're playing this video game where they're it's a uh, a target video, uh, like video game, like you know where you like uh, House of the Dead and like Time Crisis, or what was that one? Area Fifty One. Oh yeah, yeah. They're essentially playing that throughout the movie, and then they go on the tour of the White House. But when uh, they roll up on the white, the Martians roll up on the White House. These two little kids. These they fuck up the Martians because they they get the guns from the Martians. They start blasting them. Yeah, they're like the only then, competent like, shooters. <laughs> yeah, they're only they're the only competent shooters. They fucking murk all these Martians. So at the end of the movie, on their end of fucking DC, they're like the ones who pretty much protect like their whole fucking neighborhood until they find out that fucking Mason Ramsey's saving the world. <laughs> So like they're they're sitting there they're like oh shit we uh oh, it's over all right cool and they're like oh shit you know and they're like half their apartment buildings fucking blowing the fuck up and Pam Greer is all bu- uh, like bummed out they're like oh shit damn like Jim's never coming back damn that sucks and then like you know like the rest of the world is picking up all these Martian corpses and then the, you see this Martian corpse and it's like little his little brain sitting there. And then you see this little chunkla just stop on this Martian's brain. And there he is, Jim Brown, just rolling up. And you're like, oh, hell yeah, he made it. Oh, I was so stoked. He made it. <laughs> oh, I was like, fuck yeah, he made it, dude. He fucking made it. He made it back home to D.C. And he just has like that, back to he has that big hero smile on his face. Like, yep, I survived that. Oh, he's like, hell yeah, I fucked up all these Martians. Fuck these Martians. Didn't even use fuck a gun. Pussy ass Martians. Didn't even use a gun. I fucked up these little pussies. Fuck Martians. All my homies Shit, hate all Martians. Needs... <laughs> all my homies hate Martians. We don't fuck with Martians around here. Shit, damn. All we need is Jim Brown. Fuck. But yeah, that was like uh, that's the whole movie. But that's the heart. That's like the heart woman end of the movie, man. Well, and then you have that scene too of. Uh... <laughs> Tom Jones and and uh, his little group, you know, they get out of that cave. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, that's how that's how the movie ends. Yeah, they were like so, they yeah. wrote out the apocalypse in a cave. <laughs> they wrote out the apoc- apocalypse in a cave. They don't know that, that, that <laughs> civilization and humanity has lived on, but they come out of a cave. And Tom Jones is just living with the uh, deers and the animals and shit. And he's just sitting there singing. And he's like, you know, it's not unusual. And then he's just got birds and deers just hanging out with him. I kind of feel like that's what he Everyone would do anyways. Him. Honestly, yeah. I I would follow Tom Jones to the end of, to the, end of the earth. Oh, yeah. Same here. I, you know, you could do a lot worse. Yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> so fuck yeah, I I, I saw Tom Jones in the other man. Fuck yeah, hell yeah, let's go, Tom Jones. Hey, Tom Jones, where you at? Hit me up. I know he is sponsoring this. Fuck yeah, <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, Tom Jones has sponsored. Oh wait, no, that's good. I, I mean, I mean, he won't ever hear this, but I will get into a legal battle, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was Mars Attacks. 
What uh, what do you rate it, man? Uh, are we doing out of five, right? Yeah, we're doing out of five. I give this a four out of five, just because some of the the effects, you know, they like when they're destroying the Taj Mahal and the Easter Island heads. It looks a little, it looks <laughs> yeah. a little silly, and I mean, yeah. but you know, it's of the time. Uh, so four out of five. Yeah, this definitely. is almost perfect for me. It's just a lot of fun, and you could just throw it on and not have to pay attention. Oh, definitely, yeah. What about you? And since, uh, uh it's gonna be tough for me because I really enjoyed this movie. Um. This is going to be, a lot of people are going to think I'm stupid. I'm going to give this out of five. I'm going to give this a five out of five. Hey, nice. And you can't, I'd probably give. Yeah, man, you can't go against yourself. Whatever you feel, man. Yeah. I mean, if it was in black and white, since you told me about it, I'd probably give it. I'd probably be like a fucking nerd and break my own scale. I'll give it a six out of five <laughs> if it was in black and white. That's our new rating, six out of five. A six out of five, brother. Six stars out of five. But uh, yeah, we have another homie. Since <laughs> yeah, he's not with us right now. I'm sorry. He's in the, he's he's in the fucking group chat. He said uh, he said it's a four out of five. Oh, nice. Okay, so run. He said it. He said it. He said it's a four out of five. Cool, cool. That sounds about right for him. So, uh, I guess average. I mean, we pretty much just give it out a uh, four out of five. We really enjoyed this goddamn movie. It was brilliant. Oh yeah, not a lot to complain about. <sighs> no, no, not at all. Great movie. We really loved. It was. It was fun. I can't think of anything that I like was offended by. Like, you know what I mean? Like intellectually offended by right because this movie knows what it is you know it's just an Ex- homage yeah. to 50 sci-fi and horror we've, we've said it like a million times but that's what it is people so you can't you can't be mad at it for having weird plot points and uh comedy th- like thrown throughout the film because that's what it's trying to be yeah exactly if you want to go see uh, Martin Scorsese film. Uh, go see The Irishman. I'm pretty sure it's still on Netflix. Yeah, because uh, this is this is not this is not that. <laughs> so if, if that's not what you want to see, then don't watch this. Exactly. If you just if you just want to have a like if if you love 50s sci-fi horror and want to see something that's fairly recent, that's an homage to that. Watch this because it's a fucking great time. Yep, couldn't agree more. Okay, so sh- and then should we talk about uh yeah. what we're gonna do next week? Yeah, I would love to pass that on to you. <laughs> I don't know. I have a Hold feeling on, we lost you. Hold on. Oh, am I there? Up? What would you say? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you're here. Here, we lost you. Oh, for a sorry second. about that. So this one that uh, we don't all agree. I'll say that mm, <laughs> this mm, this is uh, mm. for those of you for those of you who are familiar with metal, you know Rob Halford, frontman of Judas Priest. Ooh, let's go. But this right. is after he left. This is his industrial project called Two, and the album is called Warriors. Oh. Yes, this will be very interesting amongst us. Yeah, so I'll I'll save my opinions for next week, but you never know. This might be the one that breaks our perfect streak. Ooh, I can't wait. That was, it's kind of horny. It's, kinda, <laughs> it's a little horny. I am trying. I'm trying to push the limits here. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it. I appreciate the effort. A for effort. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh, God damn, damn. I'm really excited now. Shit. I might even check it out after this. Nice. Might as well. It's all over YouTube. 
all over YouTube. Do you hear that? This this episode is sponsored by YouTube Red. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Don't sue me. Please don't sue me. Man, I wish. Oh, fucking Christ. I know. If we can get that fucking sponsor. Jesus Christ. No, I mean, I wish they would sue you. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I was waiting for your reaction, and that just was being, flawless. Just being... Just being fucking financial ruin for the rest of my yeah, life. Because of one joke. Because of one joke. They would fucking do that, motherfuckers. Indubitably. Google Google motherfuckers. <laughs> suck my dick. Well, <laughs> there goes that sponsor. Right. <laughs> Spon- <laughs> no, oh, I don't know. I don't want all right, I don't want to bury us anymore. Alright, so on behalf of Johnny Rumble, the the uh, the motherfucker <laughs> who is no longer here in the podcast that we went on for for like twenty minutes after he was gone, I'm gonna say goodbye on his behalf. And for Count Doom, I will say goodbye, my friends. Till next week. And for me. For every crash, I would wish you to shake ass, fight fascism, and believe in rock and roll. Goodbye, y'all.